How's it going, guys? Welcome to the Gregor Gaming Experience. I hope you're all doing well. This is part one of a speculative series regarding Italian tech in World of Warships. The Regio Marina is more or less confirmed for the game regarding a Q&A post published on the main website. It's gonna happen. When? Can't really say. But it's gonna happen. Because Italy played a very major role in the Mediterranean campaigns of the Second World War in particular. So, in light of this, I decided to draft a general idea of what such a thing would look like if it ever happened. I've talked about Italian battleships, destroyers, and cruisers in general, but I never really went from Tier 1 to Tier 2 to Tier 3, like in a sequential order. But that would be a very, very long video. So for now, what I'm going to do is show you my take on the first ships that would be added for the Italians, like every other tech tree. Cruisers. The line would feature an eclectic mix of ships. It would start out with typical early 20th century slow but sturdy armored and protected cruisers, but it would quickly transition into a line of very fast and well-armed light and eventually heavy cruisers. Often these ships were made without concern for armor protection because they were built as hunter-killers. In particular, fascist Italy was very concerned about Le Fantasque, an extremely fast class of French destroyers capable of moving in some circumstances at speeds as high as 45 knots. Alright, so let's get into it. Tier 1, Eritrea, commissioned 1937. This was a sturdy little ship meant for colony patrol purposes and the only one of her kind. It served as an escort for cargo submarines arriving to Japanese ports. It was about the same size as the Erie, so I imagine it'd have around 5,000 hit points. Main armament consists of two dual-barreled turrets carrying 120mm cannons, like the Japanese Hashidate. AA defense, though effectively useless at Tier 1, would consist of two 40 mil pom-poms and a couple machine guns. Top speed, 20 knots. A slow but sturdy ship that would serve as a tier one very well. Moving on. Tier two, Quarto, commissioned 1913. This was one of a couple protected cruisers the Italian cruiser line would have at low tiers. She was the first Italian cruiser to be equipped with steam turbines. It's a fairly sturdy ship and I imagine it'd have hit points of a similar amount to the Dresden or Chester at this tier. Main guns consist of six 120mm cannons with a complement of six 76 mils as its secondaries. There's no AA to speak of, not like it matters at this tier. Top speed, 28 knots. At tier 3 is Vettor Passani, commissioned in the 1890s. So it's pretty old, but it's considerably tough. This ship was one of two. They both participated in World War I in minor roles while serving as potent combat ships during the Boxer Rebellion and the Italo-Turkish War. A large ship, it'd have a lot of hit points, artillery, 12 single 152mm guns, same caliber as St. Louis. Secondaries, a handful of 120s and 1457mm, and a number of 37mm. Her armor belt is particularly tough for a low tier cruiser at 150mm, so this would make her the toughest cruiser at tier 3. That has a cost, obviously. Its top speed is very slow at 18 knots. That's arguably the weirdest thing about this ship in particular, and, you know, that comes with it being very, very old. And you know, that detail, that little detail about the top speed might turn some people off, and that would probably prompt some people to tell me to find another ship to fit at this tier because it's so slow, but the thing has 150 millimeters of belt armor at tier 3 on a cruiser. The only things that are actually even going to take this ship out are torpedoes or big guns. So I think the question of balance is pretty well answered just by that alone. I mean, you look at the St. Louis, and that thing's pretty slow, and it's arguably the best tier 3 cruiser in the game. So speed and age aren't everything. If anyone has any other candidates for tier 3, let me know. Moving on to the last of the armored cruisers. Tier 4, Bari, commissioned 1914. Russian built, seized by the Imperial German Navy, and then given to Italy as a war prize, and renamed in 1920. This ship was rebuilt and modified several times, leading up to World War II. It served as a support vessel. She was badly damaged by American bombers in 1943, and was scuttled after the armistice. Stats, eight 150mm cannons for the main battery, two 88s for the secondaries, max speed 27 knots. This would be the most well-armored cruiser at Tier 4, Though I don't know how much that might do for it now that you're dealing with aircraft and high caliber guns at this tier. Things change with these cruisers considerably at tier 5 though, as we transition from slow, thickly armored ships to typical light and heavy cruisers. This is where the fun starts. Tier 5, Giussano, Commission 1931. Alberto da Giussano, I hope I pronounced that right, was one of several in a subclass of so-called Condottieri class light cruisers. 
They were built to hunt down French destroyers, and their main design focus was on speed and firepower. But, uh, ironically, they were all sunk by torpedoes. Yeah, whoops. Still, these ships seem pretty decent on paper. Main armament, eight 152mm guns, typical of a light cruiser. Secondary arms consisted of six 100 mils and a number of machine guns. She also carried four torpedo tubes. It also had a catapult for a seaplane. The ship was very fast with a top speed of 37 knots, too, and it would be the fastest tier 5 cruiser if they introduced it. There were also plans to slap on a large number of anti-aircraft guns in certain configurations, and I would add those to the game as top hulls to research. Moving on. Tier 6, Montecuccoli, commissioned 1935. Raimondo Montecuccoli was the lead ship out of four of another sub-branch of the Condottieri ships. They were basically direct upgrades. It served in the Sino-Japanese War and was used extensively throughout the Second World War as well. Main arms consisted of eight 152mm guns with six 100 mils, eight 37 mils as AA guns, and a handful of machine guns. Keep in mind this is all stock. She had a large number of AA guns added onto her over the course of the war as well. She also carried two dual-tube torpedo launchers, once again the speed of 37 knots. It also kept the plane catapult. Fast, with good main guns. And I'm sure the torpedoes would come in handy on occasion, just like her predecessor at Tier 5. Moving on, a bit more of a sharp transition. Tier 7, Trento, commissioned, 1929. This ship was the first of the Washington Treaty heavy cruisers. The ships were built with high speed and big guns in mind at the cost of range and armor. She took part in most of Italy's major operations during the Second World War and was sunk after being torpedoed in 1942. It's a heavy cruiser mounting eight 203mm guns in four turrets, two fore and two aft. Secondaries, 16 100mm guns, AA complement, eight 40 mils, and a handful of 50 cals. She also carried eight torpedo tubes, top speed 36 knots. She also carries a seaplane catapult. So once again, a very fast and very hard hitting tier seven heavy cruiser that can't take a lot of hits, but is a very powerful glass cannon. Moving on. Tier eight. Zara, Commission, 1931. Zara represents the pinnacle of Italy's cruiser designs during the Second World War. She was one of four. The ship served extensively throughout the war, going on regular sorties to catch British convoys. She and two others were lost in 1941. The main battery consists of eight 203mm guns in four turret, 242 aft, secondaries, 16 mils, plus six 40mm cannons, and some machine guns. It also had a reasonably thick armor belt of 150 millimeters, while still being able to move at a top speed of 33 knots. She also has an aircraft catapult. So this is a more well-rounded package compared to the preceding ships in the line, and I really like the look of it. Moving on to the final tiers, talk about some paper ships. Tier 9, Ansaldo Project for Spain. Plan commission unknown. So this is a bit weird for late tiers, but these ships aren't picked haphazardly. So, Ansaldo was an Italian engineering company that was responsible for building uh, a good number of Italian warships. And they had a cruiser design that they were going to build for the Spanish Navy that never happened. There were plans to mount this thing with three triple-barreled turrets with 203mm guns, as well as a wide variety of 90mm cannons and 20 mils as a part of the AA suite, as well as two quadruple tube torpedo launchers. Ideally, unrestricted by the Washington Treaty, the ship would have been able to move up to 37 knots, with a thick armor belt of 150 millimeters in parts. So it'd be kind of interesting because you're basically getting the good elements of both the tier eight and the tier seven in this line. You don't have to sacrifice speed for the thicker armor belt and you get to keep all the weapons too. Tier 10 was an unsolo project planned for Russia and it was meant to have some pretty high caliber guns. Three turrets, triple barreled, caliber 250 millimeters. She was also meant to carry a very large amount of 100 millimeter cannons, as well as a large number of anti-aircraft guns and six torpedo tubes. Top speed, 37 knots, with questionable armor figures. I can't really find anything reliable on it, but I imagine it would be at least better than the Zara. Now, me personally, I would love to find a ship that actually existed in reality for these last tiers, um, but it is a little difficult to do. And picking these particular ships was not my idea, as a matter of fact. That credit should actually go to a contributor on the Wargaming EU forums, Demon93. He helped considerably in the research material for the Italian ships video a while back, and he's going to continue to help with this series as I go over the battleships and the destroyers eventually. But I'll leave a link to his fan-made tree in the description. It's 
pretty similar to mine. And he really, really goes into the nitty-gritty of it, too, into a lot more history regarding these ships, as well as, you know, potential candidates that can work at the same tiers, besides what I already mentioned here. But as for what I think about the ships in general, I really, really like them. Wargaming. Please add them in the near future. They will do so much for the game's cruiser meta. The line is varied, it's interesting. At early tiers, you get a number of considerably tough, protected, and armored cruisers that can bully destroyers very easily with their fast-firing guns and thick armor plates. Then when you get into mid-tier, you get some of the fastest cruisers in the game that would also be really good at taking care of destroyers, albeit in a different way. At the final tiers, you get really fast and hard-hitting heavy cruisers, which is something I really like. I'm a big fan of Japanese heavy cruisers. Perhaps some will complain that we don't need more destroyer killers in the game, but I think that this is a constructive way of dealing with the destroyer meta rather than modifying ships that we currently have in existence to curb the concerns of that class being overpowered. We can add in ships that are good at taking care of them in the right hands, mind you. Um, a lack of armor on many of the faster ships in this line would leave them very vulnerable to high-caliber destroyers like Anskit. But that's a general idea. Um, the Regio Marina fielded a very wide variety of powerful ships, especially battleships. And I think these cruisers will do a lot of good for the game from a historical and meta-driven standpoint. But that's all I have to say for now. That's just a sliver. A slice. Of that pizza pie. <laughs> In the next video, I'll be taking a look at a potential Italian battleship line featuring ships like the famous Littorio class, among others. I'll also do some work regarding Italian destroyers and even carriers, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. Until then, thank you for being a part of the Gregor Gaming Experience, and until next time, I'll see you all starside. Take care. Oh, and Happy New Year. I, I kind of have to say it.